Week 1, Day 6 For through the grace given to me, I say to everyone, God has allotted to each a measure of faith. So far we've looked at how our spiritual gifts are in fact ministry gifts. Now let's see how they relate to our natural wiring. To be clear, as we think about the aspect of the gifts, we must not see it as doctrine, but rather a creative application of Paul's doctrine based on two observations. The first being that our talents and personality traits tend to correlate. Take the gift of service for example. This is the God-enabled ability to accomplish practical and necessary tasks, usually behind the scenes. But now let's consider the common traits of such a person. Generally, people with this gift are good team players, supportive and conscientious. They focus on short-term goals and are hands-on, and may take on too much or feel unappreciated at times. In this sense, all seven gifts could also be thought of as seven types of people. The second one being that we are each a unique combination of talents and traits. If you number the seven gifts Paul listed from the one you seem to have most down to the one you possess the least, you might be a 7352146 or a 3721465. In this sense, every person has a unique mix of gifts, a one-of-a-kind combination. With this in mind, it's possible to have a biblically inspired version of the psychometric and strength-based personality test that have become so popular. Additionally, since the motivational gifts tend to be entwined in talents and traits, which we had before we were Christians, this may apply to non-Christians too. Now did Paul get all the basic types of gifts? Of course. Each of these wirings can be broken down or combined into more and more specific types. But Paul seems to have covered the irreducible minimums of personality modes. For example, a secular research pioneer in vocational theory, John Holland, managed to identify the six main personality modes and they roughly correlate to six of the seven gifts Paul lists.